Hey, what's up, guys? I'm Justin Prentice. And I'm Ross Butler. And we are going to recap the entire first season of 13 Reasons Why. Let's give it a go. Tape one, side A. We start at Liberty High School on Hannah Baker's locker, a girl who recently died by suicide. We meet Clay, a close friend of Hannah's, who was also in love with her. A mysterious box of tapes shows up at his door labeled 1 through 13. Included with the tapes is a map. Clay steals a tape player from his friend Tony to listen to them. He puts in tape one, it's Hannah's voice. Hey, it's Hannah, Hannah Baker. Tapes are the 13 reasons why she ended her life, and each tape is about a specific person. As he listens, we flash back to a time Hannah was alive. Hannah meets Justin, a boy she's crushing on at a high school party. Later at school, they flirt and decide to meet at a park. And at the park, Justin takes a photo of Hannah going down the slide. They kiss at the bottom. It's her first kiss. This is Justin's tape. The next day at school, Justin's jock friends see the photo Justin took of Hannah. It shows her underwear. They send it to everyone at school, and Hannah is mortified. Tape one, side B. None of the adults know anything about the tapes. Clay looks for Justin, but nobody's seen him in days. Clay finds Justin's girlfriend, Jessica, and another cheerleader, Sherry. Clay learns that Jessica also knows about the tapes. In a flashback, Hannah is called to her school guidance counselor's office and is introduced to Jessica. This is Jessica's tape. Hannah and Jessica have daily meetings at a coffee shop called Monet's. They meet Alex, a classmate, and invite him to join the group. FML forever. FML forever. FML forever. Hannah spends time with Clay while working at the movie theater. They flirt a lot. Alex and Jessica become distant from Hannah because they start dating each other, but they don't tell Hannah. FML falls apart. Back to present day. Concerned, the new school counselor, Mr. Porter, asks to talk to Clay. Clay sees Alex in the office. Alex looks upset. In a flashback, Alex breaks up with Jessica. Jessica shows Hannah a list that Alex wrote with Hannah's name under best ass in school. Upset, Jessica slaps Hannah in the face, and that ends their friendship. Present day, Clay asks Jessica about the tapes, but she doesn't want to talk about it. Just don't believe everything you hear, okay? Justin has been hiding away at head jock Bryce's house this whole time. Bryce doesn't know about the tapes and the other jocks want to keep it that way. Clay sees Tony going into Hannah's house. Tape two, side A. Clay approaches Alex about the tapes, but Alex is uncomfortable and won't talk. Alex too says that Hannah is lying on them. Mrs. Baker tries to get information from the school principal, but he refuses to talk to her because the Bakers filed a lawsuit against the district. The school principal asks Mr. Porter if he spoke with Hannah before she died. We had a meeting last year about colleges. It seems like he's hiding something. Tyler, the school photographer, and Ryan, the school journalist, run into Clay in the hallway. Clay sees Skye, a classmate, serving coffee at Monet's while he listens to the tapes. Flashback, Hannah goes into the boys' locker room to confront Alex about the list, but gets called a slut. This is Alex's tape. In present day, Clay approaches Alex about the list. Alex admits to Clay he wrote the list because Jessica wouldn't have sex with him and he was angry. In a flashback, Hannah buys candy at a liquor store. Hey, Bryce comes into the store buying beer and adds her candy to his tab. On his way out, he gropes her. She leaves in tears. In the present day, Clay goes inside the same liquor store. Bryce pressures Clay to buy beer and the jocks give him a choice between chugging a 40 ounce bottle or getting beat up. Clay asks Tony why he saw him with Mrs. Baker. Tony lies and says he knows Hannah's family. Tape two, side B. Flashback. Hannah stands outside Tyler's window holding the tape recorder. She holds the microphone to her chest to record her heartbeat. This is Tyler's tape. Clay listens to Hannah's heartbeat on the tape as he stands outside Tyler's window. He notices that the window is covered in cracks. Marcus, another classmate, comes up behind Clay and tells him that every person who has listened to the tapes has stood exactly where Clay's standing, and they've all thrown a rock at Tyler's window. Clay learns Marcus has his own tape. In a flashback, Hannah gets home and hears the sound of a camera from outside her bedroom window. I think there is someone outside my window. Hannah and Courtney come up with a plan to catch him with a bright flashlight. So the girls have a sleepover and break into their parents' liquor cabinet. As they kiss, they hear the sound of a camera. Courtney panics and leaves. At school, Hannah asks Tyler to trash the photos he took of them. Tyler asks Hannah out, but when she says no, he sends a photo of the girls kissing to everyone in school. 
Back to present day, Clay deletes the photo of Courtney and Hannah from his porn folder on his computer. Clay tries removing toilet paper from the baker's trees after their house was teepeed. Mrs. Baker catches him and invites him inside when she learns he knew Hannah. He continues listening to them outside Tyler's window, but instead of throwing a rock, takes an embarrassing photo of Tyler naked. As revenge for Hannah, Clay sends the photo to all their classmates. Tape three, side A. Flashback. Courtney is worried about the photograph of her and Hannah being sent around school. She's ashamed to reveal her sexuality. Courtney ignores Hannah for weeks, but Hannah wants to stay friends. Courtney and her friends invite Hannah to join them at the school dance. This is Courtney's tape. Present day, the school district hires Clay's mom, who is a lawyer, to represent the district in the Baker case. Tyler, upset about Clay's photo, seeks guidance from Mr. Porter, who is dismissive about his concerns. In a flashback, Clay's friend Jeff convinces Clay to go to the dance to be with Hannah. Clay asks Hannah to dance. I would love to dance. Awesome. Okay. Bryce tells Courtney and Hannah he knows it's them in the photo. Courtney panics and lies, telling him that kissing was all Hannah's idea and that she asked for a threesome. Courtney also tells Montgomery that Hannah and Justin fooled around even though that's a lie. Clay and Hannah share their first kiss, and when Hannah finds out that Courtney is spreading rumors about her, she confronts her. Clay is upset that Hannah's leaving. Present day, Courtney refuses to take any responsibility for Hannah's death, so Clay takes her to Hannah's unmarked grave. In a flashback, Tony gives Hannah a mixtape with the song she danced to with Clay. Present day, Alex and the jocks throw Clay in Alex's car to intimidate Clay. Alex holds down the gas pedal and refuses to brake. They get pulled over by a cop, but it's Alex's father who lets him off with a warning. Clay finds out his mom is representing the school in the Baker case. Tape three, side B. Justin threatens Clay. Clay offers to help Sherry with a school paper. Clay becomes close friends with Jeff while tutoring him. Flashback. Everyone at school fills out dollar Valentine surveys. Bryce is the top person in Hannah's results, but she secretly wants Clay. And Hannah is the top person in Marcus's results. So Marcus asks Hannah out and she agrees at work in front of Clay. This is Marcus's tape. Present day, Marcus threatens Clay not to release the tapes. Clay meets Tony's boyfriend. Clay and Sherry make out while studying, but Clay stops it because he still loves Hannah. Clay asks his mom not to work on the case. Why are you taking that case, mom? Why are you getting involved with all that? Jessica develops a serious substance abuse problem. Flashback. On the tapes, Hannah waits for Marcus at the diner for over an hour on Valentine's Day. When Marcus finally comes, he brings his friends. I don't get it. What's his play? He's an hour late. Make a girl wait. She's still there after you show. You know she's DTF. Marcus and Hannah flirt, then he tries putting his hand up her skirt. No. Don't touch me! Get up! Uh, uh. Jocks leave Hannah crying in the diner, but Zach, one of the nicer jocks, comes back to sit with Hannah because he actually liked her. He tries to help, but she doesn't trust him. Take four, side A. Flashback. In communication class, Hannah gets little bunny notes in her compliment bag every day. Hannah thinks Zach is the one leaving the notes. At school, Zach tells Hannah that he wants to date her, but she yells at him to leave her alone. The other jocks make fun of Zach. Hannah stops getting bunny notes in her compliment bag. This is Zach's tape. Present day, Clay goes to the school basketball game and in a daze, walks onto the court towards Zach. Get off the court, go! In a flashback, Hannah writes Zach a letter explaining how important the bunny drawings and compliments were to her. She asks, why me? in a letter, but Zach crumples it up. Back to the night of the basketball game, Clay keys Zach's car in the parking lot. Zach and his mom show up at Clay's house with the keyed car. The words, why me, are carved into it. I did it, okay? Zach shows Clay the note Hannah wrote him. He never threw it away. In a flashback, Hannah puts a note in Mrs. Bradley's anonymous discussion box, which Miss Bradley reads aloud to the class. Wow, okay, um, this is serious, this is, someone who's in a great deal of pain. The note is a cry for help. In present day, Clay has a breakdown when showing the foreign exchange students around the school. Because that's the kind of school that this is. Everyone is just so nice until they drive you to kill yourself. Tape four, side B. Mr. Porter confronts Clay about his breakdown in the hallway. In a flashback, Hannah goes to the college fair at school. She meets a hot librarian who invites her to join the poetry club. Hannah goes to her first meeting and Ryan is there. 
Hannah and Ryan become friends. This is Ryan's tape. Clay's mom talks with Mr. Porter about the case. Tony and Clay go rock climbing, and Tony confesses to Clay that he was there when Hannah died. You were there. You saw her. Unbeknownst to Clay, Tony and Hannah were close friends. She called him right before she took her life, but Tony didn't pick up. Tony watched the paramedics take Hannah's body away. Clay knows he can trust Tony. In a flashback, Hannah's mom tells her to dream big, but Mr. Porter says she should be realistic. Hannah reads her first poem to the group, and they love it. Ryan wants to publish it, but Hannah does not. Without her consent, Ryan publishes the poem under an anonymous author. Clay reads the poem to Hannah at work and says he wouldn't want to hang out with whoever wrote it. In present day, the Bakers go out to dinner. Mrs. Baker pretends Hannah is still alive. Clay finds a copy of the magazine with Hannah's poem and gives it to Mrs. Baker. He tells her Hannah wrote it. Tape five, side A. Flashback. Hannah cuts her hair short in an attempt to start over. Hannah goes to Jessica's party to see Clay. On the tape, Hannah says that one of their classmates was sexually assaulted at Jessica's party. Jessica starts having flashbacks of her party. Marcus gets weed from Bryce and plants it in Clay's bag, which gets Clay suspended from school for three days. Flashback. At the party, Hannah is in Jessica's room. Jessica and Justin enter, about to hook up, and Hannah hides in the closet. Jessica is so intoxicated she barely moves on the bed. Justin sees that she's barely conscious and leaves her alone in the room. Outside the room, Bryce asks to see Jessica passed out, but Justin doesn't let him. What's mine is yours. Right? Justin gives in and lets Bryce into the room. Justin lets Bryce rape Jessica. This is Justin's second tape. Clay tells Justin that Bryce can still be prosecuted. Clay tells Jessica she should tell the police, but Jessica still doesn't believe she was raped. Tape five, side B. Flashback to Jessica's party. Sherry does a flip in the living room to prove that she's sober and can drive home, and she offers Hannah a ride. This is Sherry's tape. Sherry offers her house for the night. Hannah agrees. Spanish. On the way home, Sherry hits a stop sign. Hannah wants to call the police and report it, but Sherry doesn't want to get in trouble, so Sherry leaves Hannah stranded on the street. Sherry! Hannah walks to the liquor store to call 911, but the police say they've already gotten a call. Clay arrives at the scene of an accident. He rushes to one of the vehicles and finds Jeff's lifeless body in the front seat. He finds an elderly man severely injured. Back in present day, Clay listens to Sherry's tape. Hannah reveals that the collision was due to the missing stop sign that Sherry hit. Clay confronts Sherry and she breaks down in remorse. Flashback. At school, Clay sees Hannah crying. She's carrying around the weight of Jeff's death and her role in what happened, but when she tries to tell Clay about it, he refuses to listen. Meanwhile, Sherry refuses to take responsibility for the accident. The school offers the Bakers a settlement for the case. Clay and Tony take a drive, and Clay tells Tony he was the one who found Jeff after the accident. Tony tells Clay his tape is next, but Clay is scared to listen. Tape six, side A. This is Clay's tape. Back at Jessica's party, Clay and Hannah hang out, and they have insane chemistry. Clay stops the tape because it's too hard to hear. He realizes everyone has listened to this tape and everyone knows what happened between him and Hannah that night. Clay gets a call from his mom who tells him something happened with Hannah's case. Mrs. Bradley tells Mr. Porter that the note she received months ago was written by Hannah. At Jessica's party, Hannah and Clay talk about how Jeff is the only reason they ever see each other. Clay and Hannah go upstairs to talk in the bedroom where it's quieter. Hannah and Clay kiss. At that moment, everything was perfect. They start hooking up, but Hannah remembers all the guys before Clay who treated her so poorly and panics. She shouts for Clay to stop and Clay does immediately. He tries to help her, but she tells him to leave. And he does. Jessica and Justin burst into the room and that's when Hannah hides in the closet. Clay listens to Hannah on the tape. She says he doesn't belong on this list, but he needs to be there to hear her story. Clay is devastated and lashes out. Tony insists Clay only did what Hannah asked him to do. Clay stands screaming on the edge of a cliff and cries with Tony. He couldn't tell Hannah he loved her. Meanwhile, let's go. Tell me why you fucking care. Because he fucking raped you. I hate you. 
Mrs. Baker finds Hannah's plan for the tapes in an old box. Clay's mom tells him he's on the list to be subpoenaed. Tape six, side B. Subpoenas go out to everyone on the tapes, except Sherry. Jessica debates calling the police on Bryce, but Justin tells Jessica she shouldn't report him. Clay begins listening to the next tape. He knows whoever's tape is next is who he's supposed to give them to. This is Bryce's tape. Hannah accidentally leaves the money envelope from her parents' store on the roof of her car, losing all the cash inside it. She sees Clay, and he asks her why she didn't go to Jeff's funeral. And at home, Hannah tells her parents she lost the money, and they're really upset. Later that night, she goes on a walk to the richer neighborhood in town. She notices a party going on at Bryce's house, and she goes inside. She sees Jessica, Zach, Justin, and another girl in the hot tub. Jessica points out that they're all in their underwear and convinces Hannah to join. She does. The group gradually leaves the hot tub, leaving Hannah alone. Well, uh, I better get going. One of my parents are probably like super worried right now. She's got here. Bryce then gets into the hot tub with Hannah and gropes her. She backs up and tries to get out of the hot tub, but he pulls her back in. She can't fight back. She freezes. Bryce rapes Hannah. Clay borrows Tony's tape maker. He decides not to pass along the tapes to Bryce. Sherry calls the police and reports the stop sign accident. The group debates protecting Bryce. Clay knocks on Bryce's door and asks to buy weed from him as a cover to get him to confess to raping Hannah. Bryce beats the shit out of Clay. Eventually, Bryce admits to sexually assaulting several girls at school, and Clay gets the entire thing on tape. In an ambulance, EMTs are tending to a kid with a gunshot wound to the head. Tape seven, side A. The depositions start. The Bakers make the decision to be there. During Courtney's deposition, they ask her about the photo of her and Hannah. Clay tells Tony he wants to expose the tapes, including Bryce's confession. Justin begs Jessica to stay with him, but she never wants to see him again. Flashback, back at school, Hannah goes to see Mr. Porter to tell him about what happened at Bryce's, but yeah. he doesn't listen and makes her feel worse. At this point, Hannah doesn't feel safe enough to tell him who hurt her. And with that... There really is only one option. What is it? I'm not trying to be blunt here, Hannah, but you can move on. She leaves his office and waits for him to follow her, almost as a last chance effort but he doesn't. She takes her own life later that night. Clay confronts Mr. Porter and tells him that he knows Hannah went to see him the day she died. Clay knows everything Hannah told Mr. Porter that day because she made a tape of the entire conversation. This last tape is Mr. Porter's tape. And on side B is Bryce's confession. Clay describes Hannah's death to Mr. Porter and how he could have stopped her. Any of the people on the tape could have stopped her. But we didn't. Tony apologizes to the Bakers and gives them the tape's audio files on a flash drive. During Tyler's deposition, he mentions the tapes, but it's dismissed because the lawyers haven't heard of them before. The Bakers' lawyer asks Jessica about the tapes during her deposition, but Jessica denies any knowledge of them. Justin tells Bryce about the tapes and hints that it's the end for him. You know the real story, right? You know what's true. I do now. Jessica tells her dad what Bryce did to her. Mr. Porter starts listening to the tapes. The school principal walks in to tell Mr. Porter that Alex shot himself in the head and is in critical condition. Back at the Baker store, Mr. and Mrs. Baker start listening to Hannah's tapes. 